Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Grace. Grace is here to bring God's grace to your life. What a beautiful day to gather around God's word and at his table. And uh, today, the great joy of having uh, the baptism of cadence. It's 8.30 in the morning, and not too many families have the courage to say, you're coming early in the morning for a baptism. And so this is the Hilliker's service. And so we're so thankful that uh, 8.30 is the time when we're going to get to see Cadence uh, Hilliker baptized today. So what a great joy. Um, As we look forward to uh, the Christmas worship opportunities, I wanted to just get those before you. So because Christmas Eve is on a Sunday, we'll be worshiping at 11 a.m., 1 p.m., and then 11 p.m. If it doesn't start with a 1, don't come. So... (laughs) 11 a.m., 1 p.m., 11 p.m. That's going to be the opportunity to worship on Christmas Eve. And then, of course, Christmas Day, uh, 10.30 uh, worship that's there for us. And then New Year's Eve, we're not going to have two services. Again, New Year's Eve falls on a Sunday. We're just going to do one service on New Year's Eve at 11 a.m. So we're all going to be together on New Year's Eve at 11 o'clock. Um, Because of all the activity and all that happens, uh, there's a group of ladies that uh, help uh, foster all of those happenings in regards to this space of worship. It's a group called the Altar Guild. They're having a meeting tomorrow. You're all welcome to to be a part of that. There is a, uh, a note in the grace notes about that meeting. Check the grace notes out which is on the announcement wall. So that's there for you. Today is also the last day for us uh, for a last chance to order poinsettias. If you had it on your heart to do it, you just haven't haven't done it yet. Uh, uh, In the grace notes is the order form for poinsettias. So on the announcement wall, there's uh, the bulletin there for you. Um, This coming Wednesday, as we grow God's family, Uh, closer together in friendship and faith, Advent provides a great opportunity to do that. We're going to gather for supper at 6 o'clock, soup supper. It's kind of like a potluck. Bring some soup or salad or dessert. And then we gather around the tables to to share that meal. And then we stay around those tables to give some time to gather around God's Word. And so we'll have something of a Bible study uh, together in those small table groups. Um, and I'll facilitate it, and, and so it's a wonderful time. The theme is the clothing of the king. Advent, or I mean, Christmas is a time when we really think about clothes. Oh, I see all those ugly sweaters out there, right? And uh, what about the clothing of the king? And so it's a, a beautiful theme. I'm looking forward to, to taking a look at all of that, uh, from Adam and Eve to the coat of many colors and how that all points uh, to Jesus. All right, and so um, there's also available for you Advent devotions. They're uh, on by the announcement wall, and grab one of those. They're beautiful, uh, and they're well done, so grab the Advent devotions. Um, as we uh, give ourselves to life together and demonstrating God's love, um, a, a way that we do that is life together Uh, voters meeting today after late worship. So be mindful that we're gathering as voters today to look forward into the new year and to make some approval. All right, in the sharing tree, gifts are due. So if you took a tag, uh, the the gifts are due. So if you forgot them, don't leave worship. I've seen people do that before. Uh, Just get them here as soon as you can, right? So that's, that's there for you. And then as we share God's life, what a beautiful opportunity to invite someone to come hear about uh, a Savior's birth with our Christmas cantata. Our praise choir is working hard. Uh, The praise choir will be offering the Christmas cantata on December 17th for both services, 8.30 and 11, as well as Monday evening on uh, December 18th. So invite invite others to attend. It should be beautiful. All right. With all of that said, uh, let's prepare our hearts for worship. Advent, as it turns out, is a season of preparation. I want this phrase in your head throughout this season of Advent. Let every heart prepare him room. It's from Joy to the World. Let every heart 
prepare him room. And today, we'll consider what it is, how do you prepare for the Lord's return, for his coming again. And so may God bless our worship today. Baptism, God's word, the Lord's table, what a beautiful day. Let's stand and begin our Advent season in preparation of our King. And God calls us with these words. We begin this Advent season by calling on the name of our God, who was and is and ever shall be, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's remain standing for our, jo- our opening song. come up with mom and dad, Craig and Jessica, and there she is, how precious. Yeah, you guys can come on up as a family, if we have enough room for all you guys. (laughs) I'm not sure, but yeah, great. And so, um, I'm sorry, I got... um, The order for uh, our time together, so... Yeah, you, because we don't do this too much at 8.30, I've got to remember to let you know we do this as a church family. So our baptisms happen not just to kind of look up here and look at uh, pretty little Cadence, you're so precious, <laughs> but that you, as we as a church family, uh, play a part. And so you're going to give voice to the hope that we have, to the promises that God's made, to the faith that uh, is being uh, a part of life today, and so when you see the opportunity to to speak, speak boldly and loudly together as God's family. And so let's begin this beautiful time uh, with the order of baptism. We make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Lord commanded baptism, saying, To his disciples in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. The holy apostles of the Lord have written, the promise is for you and your children. And baptism now saves you. We also learn from the word of God that all are conceived and born sinful and so are in need of forgiveness. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy, 
has given his only son, Jesus Christ, to atone for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So cadence, receive the sign of the cross upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Hear now how our Lord Jesus has opened the kingdom of God to little children. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant, and he said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. And it is your beautiful privilege and task as parents to confess with the whole church faith in our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in whose name this child is to be baptized. And after Cadence has been baptized, you are at all times to remember her in your prayers, to put her in mind of her baptism, to give your counsel and aid that Cadence would be brought up in the true knowledge and worship of God, be taught the Ten Commandments, the Creed, and the Lord's Prayer, and that as Cadence grows up in years, like the rest of these guys, (laughs) that you would place in her hands God's precious word, the Holy Scriptures, bring her to the services of God's house, 8.30 most likely. (laughs) And come to the Lord's Supper, the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. And so abiding in her baptismal grace and in communion with the church, Cadence would grow up to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of Jesus. So, Craig and Jessica, this then do you intend gladly and willingly to do? If so, together answer yes. May God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work as parents and with God's grace, fulfill what we are unable to do. In order to implore the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ upon the gathering of cadence into the family of our Father, let's all pray the prayer that he gave us. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy thy will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Cadence, the Lord preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Because this child cannot answer for herself, we shall all together with parents, you who are witnessing our church family, faithfully speak on her behalf in the testimony of the forgiveness of sins and the birth of the life of faith which God our Father bestows in and through baptism. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? I do renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And who brings this child to be baptized? We do. And how is she to be named? Cadence Hope Philiper. Hi, Cadence. You want to take, they want to take that pretty little band. 
Cadence, hope, hilliker. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're raising that arm and praise to Jesus already, aren't you? That's right. Okay. Oh, she likes my beard too, which is good. All right, now I got to find my place back here so we can. Say a blessing. Oh, I haven't even started hardly talking and you're yawning already. Oh, my. All right. Okay. And we say to you, precious little cadence, may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you cadence, new birth of water in the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting Peace be with you, Cadence. Amen. And tomorrow we're going to give a candle, a burning light that represents the light of faith that burns brightly in Cadence's precious little heart. There we go. And we say to you, Cadence, receive this burning light. Live always by the light of Christ. Be ever watchful for his coming that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which shall have no end. And let's pray. Almighty God and merciful Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family, and you have granted Cadence new birth and holy baptism and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, an heir of your heavenly kingdom. When we humbly implore you, that as she has now become your child, you would keep her in her baptismal grace, that according to all your good pleasure, she may faithfully grow to a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord and giver of life, look with kindness upon Craig and Jessica, the father and mother of Cadence, and upon all of our parents. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. May they be examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their own baptism, that they may share with their children the salvation you have given them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And in baptism, God has added cadence to his own people to declare the wonderful deeds of our Savior, who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same Heavenly Father to work with us in His kingdom. And you, Cadence Hope Hilliker, may the Lord bless you in all your ways from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Okay, you ready to take a little walk? All right, here I come. A new child of God. Little Cadence. There she is, Adeline. It's pretty. Little Cadence Tilliker. <laughs> I'm going to cut through. <laughs> hey, Freddie, you see little Cadence? There she is. Little Cadence Tilliker. I want you guys, 830 people, to see this precious little one. There she is, little Cadence. Little cadence. Doesn't take much as you get to know Craig and Jessica to know the depths of their love for their children. And it's a special bond that parents have with their children. And so it's so important to consider our place in Cadence's life. That we would provide a place where Cadence could come to know the depth of God's love for her. Not only today but always, each and every day. So may God give us the perseverance and um, the heart to provide such a place for such a precious little one. All right, Dad. You already know you already got one in your hands, but I'm going to give you one more. And I'm going to give her to you, bring her up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. What a precious gift. Yeah. Okay.
All right, who gets to blow out the candle? All of you? Oh, good. <laughs> hey, I think someone jumped the gun. All right, there we go. You guys can go back to your seats. <laughs> Let's stand as we go now before our Lord in a time of confession and forgiveness. And we say, Lord, Lord forgive, forgive me, me my sins. My sin divides, separates, sin and, and destroys. destroys. So, so fill, fill me, me with, with peace and empower me to live in peace with, with others. others. Restore us, O God, let your face shine that we might be saved. The way of our God is peace. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, who died for our sins, we are restored, redeemed, and reconciled. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's remain standing for a song of praise. seated. I invite Mike Bohm forward. He's going to share God's word with us today. The Old Testament reading and New Testament reading and then the gospel. Mike. Good morning, everyone. The Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. As when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any gods besides you, who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways, but when continued to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become the one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us, and have given us over to our sins. 
Yet you, Lord, our Father, we are the clay which you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. O oh, look on us, we pray, for all of your people. The next one is the epistle reading, which comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given in you, Jesus Christ. For in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly await for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful who has called you to the fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel comes to us today from Mark chapter 13, verses 24 through 37. But in those days following that distress, the sun will darken and the moon will not give us its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn these lessons from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near right at the door. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But God, excuse me, but about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Thanks, Mike. You may be seated. Well, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. This is a time, right, where there's so much preparation that goes into this holiday season. I know that you all are preparing for Christmas. I mean, we all, in some form or fashion, prepare. I mean, for us, that phrase is beginning to look a lot like Christmas was on our hearts yesterday because the tree got put in its place. The outdoor lights got up. The lights last night were on. They looked beautiful, not one not working. <laughs> and then the decorations start happening. That's one of the ways that we prepare. We prepare for people to come over or for our own family to gather. And so you prepare by making some lists. You want to know who's coming, who can't make it. You make a list of the food that you're going to eat and all that stuff. And then, of course, we all have our list, our want list of our Christmas gifts. And so we make a list because we need lists. Because if I, we don't have a list, my wife won't get anything for Christmas. Oh, did I say that out loud? We've got to write it down. And so we make our lists. We move furniture. We get everything you're preparing for the holiday season. It turns out that the Advent season for us gathered in these few weeks before Christmas is for us the beginning of this church year. We start with a season of preparation that our hearts would be made ready for the coming 
of Jesus, our Savior. And so it's reflected in the words found in the lyric to joy to the world. Let every heart prepare him room. When you're preparing, you're getting ready, you're anticipating. There's something that's going to be happening or somebody that is coming. And that somebody that we're preparing for, letting letting him have room in our lives and hearts, is for the coming of our Lord Jesus. And today I want us to consider that we would prepare for Jesus' return. That he's coming again. This is his second coming, his second advent, as it were. Christ is coming again. Are you prepared? How do we spend our time preparing for the return of the Lord of heaven and earth? Well, you can answer that by saying a few different answers. I mean, some of what we saw at the beginning. You can spend your time preparing by figuring out the time when Jesus will return. Many people try to figure out when Jesus is going to return, and they take a look at all the mysterious prophecies, and they give their time just if they could just know when. And so they look at all the things happening in our world as if to spend the time thinking, is it now? Is he coming back now? Is it soon? Could it be later? When is he coming? And so all of that begins to turn in an answer of when. And that's how time is spent. You could spend your time doing that. Many do. But I find that when you focus your your preparation of your heart for the return of Jesus, about when he's going to come back. And is it now or soon? There's a couple things that happen. It can be a time if, if we're just preparing by focusing our time, preparing on the when of it all. It can be a time of anxiety for us because we realize, uh uh-oh, it's coming. Like, here's, here's how this happens. Let's say I'm at home for a time by myself and, and there's going to be a time when maybe uh, there's a return of the family back home maybe after several days. doesn't happen often, but it happens every once in a while where I'm home and Renee is away. And there's this moment of anxiety for me when I think the time is coming near. I look around and I think, uh-oh, I am not ready. I got dishes to get, you know, stacked. I got, I got clothes piled up, spread all over the place. I mean, this place is a mess. And all of a sudden, we get, we get this anxious reality that there's not enough time. It's going to happen too soon. And you can spend time in the return of Jesus all wound up in that anxiety because you're thinking it's too much of a mess And I don't have enough time. Or there's the other side of the coin. If our time preparing is focused on the when of it all, we might just think, you know what? It's been all of this time. I don't think he's coming back. If not, you know, who knows? It's been over 2,000 years. It doesn't seem like he's in a big hurry. And we just, we just let, we just like say, I don't know if he's ever coming back. And it's just out of our mind. And so if the the first side of the coin is anxiety, the second side of the coin is like, all right, I'm just going to let happen whatever happens. This was happening in Isaiah and the people of God. They refused to get their house in order. They just let the mess pile up to the point where even they felt in their heart that even their righteous things, the good things felt messy and like filthy rags. And we can do that too. We can just give our time thinking, ah, what's it matter? Jesus returns. Not really, doesn't feel like he's coming back anyway. And all of a sudden we look around our lives and it's a mess. How do you prepare your hearts 
for the return of Jesus? How do you spend your time? Well, there's another answer to that question, and it could go like this. You know what? When he comes back, if he comes back, I don't know the time. I don't know. All I know is I am weary, and I am worn out. I am tired. And so you know what? When you feel tired and weary, what you want to do is just go to sleep. Just put it all out of your mind and just do nothing. I'm out. And I'm going to take a long nap. And Jesus speaks to that. I mean, over and over and over again, we heard Jesus say to his disciples, his followers, to you and to me, stay awake. Stay awake. That is no way to spend your time. So how do we spend our time? And it is here that our hearts are drawn to the very last portion when Jesus tells a story about a head of the household that leaves home and says, let's keep this, let's keep, let's keep home, home, even when I'm gone. So let's hear these words again from Mark chapter 13. Jesus says, Therefore, keep watch. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with his assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch. Because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. And if he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone. Watch. How do you spend your time preparing? What does that look like? And Jesus gives us this real homey, down-to-earth kind of picture of how we prepare, how we spend our time. And it's basically this. While you're waiting for the Lord to return, do the work. Do the work of the master. Just be about the tasks that you're given to make a home and to keep a home a home. That's what you've been doing all these times, whether the master's here or away. Do the work. And there's something that happens when you engage your heart in the work of another. You're drawn to them. It goes like this. Maybe you can think of a time in your life where you saw somebody that you knew or you're looking at their life and you're saying, man, they, their job is, if I, I could do that job. No problem. And then you do it. And you're like, oh, ho, ho, ho. this happened to me. And I'm, I'm almost ashamed to say it. We, we had the joy and the privilege of having Renee for a long season of our life uh, stay at home with the children. And there was a part early in that I thought, well, she's just home with the kids. I mean, how hard can that be? You know, and then she goes away, and all of a sudden, I find myself doing the work of a stay-at-home parent, and um, it was complete chaos, I felt. I mean... I couldn't believe how many things you had to kind of keep up in the air at once. How just a moment of not paying attention. It, I mean, you really, I mean, you, you know, that. and so this anxiety started filling me. And all of a sudden, my heart was drawn closer to Renee because I knew what it took now in just a small way because I gave myself just a little bit to the work of what she was about. And then she came back from getting the mail. And, uh, <laughs> you know, 
and all was fine. <laughs> Do you see how Jesus is calling us to prepare our hearts for His coming? It is to engage in His work. And here, doesn't it feel like when, when Jesus talks about a home, it feels a lot like church. To be about the work of our Master, our Lord. To, to give ourselves to His heart of loving even the unlovable to life. To have a heart of mercy, to have a heart of service and sacrifice. And that happens in the everyday realities for you. Not just for me who gets to, has the privilege of standing up and proclaiming Jesus. It happens as you serve your family, as parents, as you serve your older members in your family, as seniors, as you care for your neighbors, as you look in. And I see that all over the place. I see when I look at you so often... I see servants of the master serving the household of God. And, the, and mankind in beautiful ways. Let me close by sharing just a quote from Dr. Schmidt who um, considered this portion of Jesus' teaching in Mark 13 of that last part from verses 34 to 37. And he says this, because our master has gone away and we wait his return, it's easy at times to be discouraged. It looks like we're failing. We watch as more and more people turn away from God, but this is God's kingdom not ours. Jesus doesn't call us to fix it. He simply calls us to serve in it. He promises someday he will return and bring about the fullness of God's reign. Until then, we live, and I love this, we live in humble and hopeful service. To watch and wait for Jesus is not to spend our time trying to figure out the signs of the end and predict his return. No. To watch and to wait is to engage in faithful service and to find ourselves being drawn closer to the heart of Jesus as we share his love in this world. Let every heart Prepare him room. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and sing Joy to the World. Just two verses. I'm just going to give you a taste of Christmas music. <laughs> Joy to the World. may be seated as we bring our blessings now before our God in the time of offering.
Thanks, Kevin. Let's pray. Lord, this morning we bring to you just a portion of that which you have blessed us with. Would you use these, our offerings, that we at Grace would make room for service to you and our neighbor, that others would know of who you are, of a Lord of life and love, and that you're returning as king. We want that for our families, for our community, and for our world. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we go to the Lord in a time of prayer. We have some uh, prayer requests here. Uh, we're going to be praying for Marge Bernard. Uh, Marge had successful surgery to uh, deal with an infection in her knee. Uh, so we continue to pray for her speedy recovery and that, uh, she, that the Lord would be with Jack as he cares for her. Uh, we're also praying for Cadence Hope Hilliker and for Mason Bradford. So we pray that God continues to enrich and to grow his family through the waters of holy baptism. And we pray our continued blessing upon them that they would always know that Jesus loves and cares for them. We're also praying for Lyle and Mary. Uh, diagnosis of uh, just not clear what's going on, but he is quite tired and has trouble breathing. Uh, they're, fan, they're friends of Terry and Vicki Bauer. So we pray that uh, Lyle would have a successful treatment, that he would have peace and patience uh, during uh, this time, and that he would heal completely. So with that, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Pastor, yes. Oh, sorry. Prayer to add. Huh? I, I got a prayer to add. I'm so sorry, because I got, I got the word from uh, the Good Cells, they're here today. It's Katie, right? Yeah. Cassie, Cassie. Cassie was uh, one of our Romeo students, teenager. She was in a really bad, she's on part of the cross country team, really bad um, car accident. She's on, on a ventilator, broke some vertebrae, and uh, has some brain bleed. She's, we're thankful she's alive, but has a long road ahead of her. Okay. So let's pray for Cassie and her uh, recovery. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Lord, we come before you in a time of prayer that you would uh, consider Cassie. Uh, Lord, you know her, her troubles, you know her, her aches, her pains, but we pray that you would be with her, that you would give her confidence that her healing would be complete. We're also pay, uh, praying for the family of Patrick Tiganelli. He is uh, Joe Tiganelli's uh, Father, uh, Joe, is the son-in-law of um, Alicia and, and Larry Winchett. So we pray that God would reach out and uh, wrap that family in his loving embrace as they mourn the death of Patrick. So we pray, gracious Lord, sustain your servants to the end of the age. As we enter another church year, encourage the preachers of your word and all who hear that the testimony about Christ may be confirmed among us as we wait for his return. And Father, we ask that you would give boldness and faithfulness to Matthew, our synodical president, uh, David, our district president, and Norm, our circuit visitors, and all pastors in Christ. Renew the faith and love of all Christians that our knowledge of you may grow mightily. Heavenly Father, grant your blessing to all marriages and keep husbands and wives faithful to each other. Be with them as they care for the children you have given them. Let your loving care be with all children who have suffered abuse or neglect and richly bless those who open their homes to children in foster care. Almighty God, behold our nation and its leaders and protect our armed forces, taking them under your care and blessing. We pray where there is war that you would bring your deep and abiding peace. And Lord, be with us in your compassion. Deliver the sick from their infirmity the troubled from their afflictions and the grieving from their sorrow and the dying from their fear. Father, we ask that you remember those that we named and those that we now name in our hearts.
May all who cry to you receive grace according to your will. Merciful Lord, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, entered Jerusalem to shouts of, and cheers of joy. Grant that we may be stirred by the word and sacraments to rejoice anew now and at his second advent. And gracious Father, you have made us glad to enter into your presence to hear the good news of our Savior Jesus and receive your gifts. Preserve your church against all her enemies and lead us to walk in your ways and follow your paths so that when Jesus returns in his glory, we may welcome him with glad hosannas through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Let's remain standing for our closing song. Again, thank you for the Hilliker family to be here for Cadence. We thank God that he continues to grow his family through the waters of holy baptism. With that said, let's go with God's blessing and benediction. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a great week, everybody. Thank mm -hmm. you.